And last but certainly not least, please welcome City Source to the stage. Jason, come on out. Last but not least, welcome back to the stage, City Source with their 2.0. This is a 2.0. Thanks, Jason. Hi, my name is Jason Kiesel, and I am the founder and CEO of City Sourced. Actually, four years ago, we had the incredible opportunity to actually launch our company on this very stage, so we are very excited to be back here. At City Sourced, we get paid to manage civic engagement tools for cities and schools all around the world. And we have some incredible customers like San Jose and Los Angeles. But since our launch, two interesting things have happened. The first is crowdfunding. Sites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo have emerged and made this technology very mainstream. The second is this. Our, our cities, our counties, and our schools are going broke. This is, n this is no secret. It's happening to everyone here. Raise your hands if you've had a school program cut, you've, you've gone to a library and the hours are closed. This is something that affects every single one of us and the problem is only getting bigger. Well, we've developed a solution for this. I'm happy to announce today, for the very first time, our new product, ZenFunder, the only crowdfunding application built specifically for local governments and schools. Let's take a look. So, here we're looking at the citysource.com website. We're in a neighborhood in San Jose. They're one of our customers. And if you scroll down, you can actually see some of the Zen funds that have been started by members of the community. Let's take a look at that first one. So here's a fund, a Zen fund that's been proposed by a mom. She's trying to get a pool reopened that had been closed due to budget cuts. She's trying to raise $65,000. She's engaging her family, her friends, her community. And she's trying to get this pool reopened. Her kids love to swim. They were devastated when it closed, but she's trying to do something about it. On this page, you can see exactly where the pool is. You can see all the details of, this, of, of the project, as well as who's contributed, comments, questions, media, et cetera. But what separates us from all the other crowdfunding applications is at the very top. If you look at the, at the uh, workflow graphic at the top, it says proposed. So this mom has proposed this project but she hasn't fulfilled all the requirements. So in our platform, we've built in for our customers the ability to set requirements on any project that's proposed. In this case, if you look at the requirements, you can see that the city requires a 10% funding commitment and that funding commitment to be fulfilled within 90 days. These requirements are totally configurable by every city and they really work together to set expectations both on the community side and on the city side. So once she gets these requirements fulfilled, it'll go to the city, be approved. If it's not, the money is refunded. If it is approved, they'll move on to funding the project, getting it implemented, and finally completed. And all of that is cataloged on this page for everyone to see. Let's take a look at another project. This is an actual project in San Jose, uh, sponsored by a councilman in the city. So you notice, at the top, it's approved. He didn't have to go through any of the red tape because he's a city official and he fast-tracked it. What this is, is a library crosswalk that the, the community felt was dangerous. It's a blind intersection, a lot of kids are crossing. They want to put in those blinking lights that you see for crosswalks. Well, those things cost 12 grand. So, in this case, the city is actually able to donate a little bit of money, something our, our platform supports that no one else does. So the city can donate their share, in this case it's 500 bucks, since it's approved, all the community members can now go out to their friends, their family, their community, their neighbors, and raise the additional funds, and they know for certain that if they can raise the money, the city will implement this project and install those lights. This is a huge, huge innovation in this space. Prior to doing this, the councilman would have fielded calls saying, hey, look, we want this put in. The councilman really didn't have any other response other than, I'm sorry, we just don't have any money. Now, with ZenFunder, he can create a project and engage the community, and they can, they can all come together and get this project completed. We think ZenFunder is going to change the way communities interact with local government. But I don't think you guys are willing to take my word for it. So I'm going to welcome back on stage our first customer on the ZenFunder platform, Councilman Pete Constant from the city of San Jose. He's gonna tell us a little bit about what he thinks about it. Thanks, Jason. With 
government agencies suffering the huge deficits we have, saying no has become commonplace. You might notice in that picture of the library there was a fence around it. We spent $7.6 million to build a library that had a fence around it because we couldn't afford the last $300,000 to open and operate it. So we've been telling our constituents no, no, no. And when we have issues like this where we have a real safety issue and we have no money to implement it, we have residents that say, what can we do to fund it? Nobody wants to just pay more taxes that go into the great government hole, but if they see a project that they can fund, they'll do it. They've been asking us for years, how can we pay to get these things in our neighborhood? So this really couldn't come at a better time for cities like San Jose who've been struggling for years. Thanks, Pete. So as you can see, this is going to be huge. I'd invite you all to check out our site, citysource.com slash zenfunder, contribute to a project, create your own, and help make our communities a better place. Thank you. Okay, judges. So, judges, what do you I mean, uh, listen, I, I, I love bringing all these energies to bear on, you know, on, on something that's as noble a calling as this. Pete really got to the question that I had. You know, in, in local communities, I think we all look at those crosswalks, but there's the tragedy of the commons issue, right? That, you know, we all say we pay our taxes, I'm not going to be the guy to have to go fund that. So, are you, re you know, I noticed on a couple of the things you've launched, I, you know, the support di seemed to be pretty low. What is your early indicators? You know, you've had some anecdotal stuff, pe people saying we're willing to fund this, but what's your level of confidence that people are going to show up and fund the pool, fund the crosswalk, or did we build something really elegant that suffers from the fact that people already feel like they pay? So, obviously there's gonna be projects that are initiated and never funded. I mean, that's, that's true right. with Kickstarter, that's true with anything. I think where you're gonna get the most success is where you can generate a cause and get a lot of support in the community to donate 50 bucks, 100 bucks. It really doesn't take that much when you go out to the crowd. I mean, you get $100 from 1,000 people, that's a right. lot of money. Right. So it's all just about get, generating awareness. And as Pete said, you know, his constituents are looking for these sorts of solutions. How, and I, how do you, how do you sorry generate? Sorry to interrupt. If, if I could just add, we've had four libraries with fences around them for four years. In the last month, we've opened two of them, and we've raised from the community over $300,000 to get those libraries open wow. because the residents are demanding it. That library with the fence that you saw will open June 8th because the, the residents and the neighborhoods and the teachers have come and donated to us. So, so, kick, Kickstarter works best when it's something tangible. I, I mean, the Pebble Watch raised $14 million and stuff like that. Some of the ways to raise money for this stuff is to buy a brick in the yard or something like that. Is there a way to offer a tangible component Good for idea. your donation of $300 or something like sure. that? Sure. So kind of Library. secondary release on this project, we're going to allow, similar to what Kickstarter does in the, in the perks, where if you donate $1,000, you can get your name on the, you know, the reading room of the library you know, or, or something like that. Something that, or a plaque. That's, that's placed in your, your library game. penalties, you know, waived for life or something. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things Kickstarter does really well is to generate that awareness. And so how do you, how do you what are your thoughts on how you generate awareness for some of the projects? Because without awareness, you don't get people donating. Right. I mean, awareness is really going to be driven from the crowd itself. I mean, there needs to be a few internal champions of whatever projects are being initiated on, on, the, on the platform. You know, so if it's a, a you know, a diligent mom that really, you know, feels her cause, she's going to be the one that's driving it. In the end, you know, we can only do so much marketing on our end. This is really their, this is their platform. You know, yeah. they want to... Is there a way, is there a way though to syndicate it? You know, like, I'm, uh, I'm involved in a company called Fundly that's doing interesting things in the, you know, in kind of social fundraising space. Obviously, you've mentioned Kickstarter a few times. Is there a way that you can go syndicate this? You build a unique platform that caters specifically right. to cities, towns, et cetera. I get that. But I, I think what we're saying is, how do you really get it out there in, you know, in front of some of these people in the community and really get their excitement kind of? In so much as public. white labeling the product? No, not white just labeling. I just wanted to be in, in front of more people. Yeah. In, 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 uh, to Robert's point, give them something in return so they feel great about doing like it. Like partnering with Nextdoor, maybe. Yeah, yeah exactly. Kind of local social network. Right. Like but yeah, I mean, so, you know, obviously the social networks play a big part in this. 
our relationships with our existing customers, the cities, are going to play a big role in this. You know, we have media outreach. We have neighborhood uh, leadership groups that we outreach to. You know, there's a number of ways that we can socialize the different projects. So it's awesome. Right, your final question. Well, I'm just going to make a statement that this is a startup competition, and there's other things that are going to make investors a lot more money than this will. I, or am I wrong? Well, this one, this one, I think it's a you know, I get excited about it because the world needs it. Right. And, but at the uh, end of this panel, yeah. Jason's going to ask us for our one company, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure. This is this is something that makes me warm and fuzzy, but I'm not is sure. Is there a business here? Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we essentially take a cut of all non-taxpayer contributed funds. So we take 5%, just like Kickstarter. So there's definitely a business here. Awesome. Yeah. Let's hear it for CitySource and Funder. Thank you. Well done. Thank you.